Today, I'm going to show you the best way to use the listening bus in Studio One. I mean, maybe it's not the best, but this is how I use it anyway. Welcome to the producer place. My name is Nick Rollo. I'm a producer and mixing engineer from Australia. Hope you're doing well. Before we get into it, I just want to give you a free gift. There's a free vocal mixing cheat sheet below. It runs you through my whole process for mixing vocals from start to finish. It should be helpful, especially if you're a beginner. You can go check that out below. All right, let's get into the video. So in Studio One, it might look like this when you have a session, you know, you've got all the channels, you've got whatever buses you've got, and then you've got your master bus, your mix bus, your main bus, whichever one you want to call it. You've got this at the end, which is basically summing all of these channels, and that is the output that you hear. The listening bus is kind of a next step to that. So to activate it, you just right click on the master bus, and you say enable listen bus. So yeah, actually you can do it anywhere right click anywhere on the uh, mixing view and say enable listen bus now you get the listen bus so pretty much what happens now is everything is fed into the mix bus the main out and then that is fed into the listen bus so the listen bus doesn't really control anything except for now for me it's the overall volume i'll just i'll play it as you can see it moves up and down but the listen bus doesn't control the main bus. Now, a little bit confusing, but the main reason for this is the main bus is what gets exported. So when you bounce out the track, it's the main that it is going through. The listen bus can be used in a few different ways, but the predominant way that I use it is for monitoring and referencing. You could probably send it elsewhere if you wanted, like if you wanted to just send it through headphones, you could change the output here. That isn't how I would personally recommend using it, just because I think this particular method is really handy. So what I do is I've got a listening bus preset and on it I've got ADPTI metric AB. So this is where I put all my reference tracks. So I'll have, you know, if it's a rock song, I'll have rock reference tracks and I can like, you know, look through all of these different features and I can loudness match them. And it's good because now it's after my limiter. So basically full volume, full processing, then over here is the next step, and then I can actually compare the final product. Next, I've got tonal balance. Again, after all of my mix bus stuff, this is just showing me the EQ curve that I'm kind of after. Insight, if I want to look at you know, the loudness and various other things. Then I've got sound ID reference for my speakers, and if I'm using either my M50Xs or my R70Xs, this just tries to flatten the EQ curve so that I can kind of trust what I'm hearing. I, some people hate that stuff. I love it. I think it's super helpful. Then I've got VSX for my Slate VSX, which I mix on quite a lot. And DVR monitor is what I used to use when I mixed in M50Xs, kind of doing what the VSX is doing. So why this method is good is in other software that doesn't have a listening bus or doesn't have a bus like this, basically what happens is when you export the song, if you had all of these plugins over on the main channel, Every time you export, you'd have to go through and turn them all off and then turn them back on. And if you ever forget to turn them off, if you're doing any kind of referencing with your like speakers or headphones, anything to flatten EQ curves, it's going to sound weird. It's going to get kind of messy. And even if you're running just like Tonal Balance or Insight Pro or a level meter, having that stuff on, you know, maybe like maybe it does something to the sound. Who knows? Any, any kind of audio processing has the potential to change the sound and the quality of the sound and you know what's happening with the sound so pretty much the less stuff that you have on any channel that is doing nothing so you know if you've got 10 level meters like i'm sure something's going to happen when you do that maybe i'm not entirely sure myself point being that pretty much the cleaner that this like mix bus can be when you export the better so have any referencing plugins, analysis plugins, correction plugins, have all of that on your listening bus. And it just makes your life easy. I don't have to turn these off, I just export it and then, you know, they just don't get factored into the output. I also like to use it just to turn down the volume. Like if I've got a singer in, maybe I don't wanna, I don't know why, I just like, I don't always like to mess with the main bus because it's like, what if I forget to change it? This doesn't really impact anything aside from what you're actually hearing from the speakers or the headphones. So if you know I'm recording something, if a singer's recording something, if I'm mixing and I can't be bothered reaching for my Apollo, which is stupidly slightly out of reach. I have to lean forward to do that, I should fix that. But I can just 
jump jump to it either on my fader port or just scroll over here and turn it down there super easy i don't have to think about it again just really makes my life easy i think it's a pretty good workflow hack so yeah try it out and let me know what you think if you found this helpful hit like hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell as i said free cheat sheet linked below i also have a free course for producing in studio one and a bunch of other little goodies kind of floating around there's some free presets for studio one if you'd like i need to really organize where they all sit I should make like a little link page but <laughs> thank you so much for watching as i said hit like and i'll catch you next video goodbye